In this video I'm going to look at a material that contains both copper and platinum. In order to construct a peak model, because we need a peak model, platinum 4F and copper 3P overlap. So a peak model is required if you want to separate the signal from a material that contains both platinum and copper. But in order to construct a peak model we have to come up with components that correspond to the different chemical states within a material. And then we have to relate these components in some way, relational constraints between the different photoemission lines. For example, here we've got a doublet pair, a platinum seven halves and five halves. They have a well-defined ratio. So we're going to use relational constraints to ensure that the peak model makes physical sense. But more importantly, what we have to do is come up with line shapes for these component peaks that correspond meaningfully to the background curve that we choose to remove the inelastically scattered signal from these data. The importance of the choice in background will be illustrated using this Platinum 4F. I'll make a copy of this Platinum 4F. In fact, I'll do it several times. And then add to each one of these spectra they're all identical, they all overlay perfectly, but if I choose different background types then I ought to get different curves that sit below the peak based on the choice of the background. So how do we create a background? Well that's on the quantification parameters dialog window on the regions property page we can simply create a region and the point of a region is to define an interval over which we would like to integrate signal above a background curve so that we can then estimate the amount of substance. So here is one example. It's, it's a Shirley background. However, there are several different backgrounds that we may choose. So I'm going to just propagate the one that I've created. So I've got all of these with the same background. And then I'm going to adjust the backgrounds. So let's see what happens when we put a linear background. So there's another example of an estimate of what is happening across a photo emission peak. may not be particularly good for a platinum peak. This is a metallic peak, so we do expect a response beneath the peaks, and a linear background clearly does not show that. Let's put in another example. This time let's choose, say, a two-gar background. This is a universal cross-section, and it produces a shape that is dictated by a set of coefficients that were defined by Tugar. So here we have it applied to the Platinum Peak. Again, does not really match our expectation of what inelastic scattered electrons ought to do beneath photoemission peaks in a metal. But nevertheless, this is another choice for a background. Let me use another one. I'm going to use a U2. So this is a two-parameter Tugar background where I can make adjustments to the shape of the Tugar background based on the cross-section parameters. In fact, there's one parameter that I can adjust. The other one, this value here, is calculated from the data. But the second parameter, which if negative, produces a Tugar background that has different characteristics. It came in with minus 650. If I change that and make it a smaller, number then the response is more pronounced and when I do that you can see here we've got a different shape. Let me just do that slightly differently. Let's make that say 80 and we see that we get a, a background that matches reasonably well at both ends based on this Tugar approximation. So there's another background. What else can we use? We could use say a aluminium background this is another two-gar background, a U-aluminium two-gar background. These are cross-sections that have been designed for aluminium. That's totally inappropriate for these data, but let's just illustrate what they look like. And, well, we get a completely different shape to the background. So the, the background that we're choosing makes a difference to the shapes of these peaks. I overlay these four that I've defined and you can certainly see the backgrounds are different and I can also graphically subtract the background signal from the data and we can see that the worst one 
is this last one which was the aluminium that's not surprising because this is not aluminium it doesn't have the resonances of aluminium backgrounds so what we see here is a rather poor approximation but all three are different for the three backgrounds that I've chosen so the message to take from this is that the background that we introduce we choose a Shirley or we choose a linear or Tuga we are altering the shape of the peaks now let's have a look at the peak model that I've already constructed and here it is let me just make a adjustment to the display so I can see all of the different components within this peak model and there it is I've got the peak model that you see relative to the background that's been calculated and the way this whole peak model is constructed is using a set of components representing the photo emission peaks and also a set of components that are re representing background signal now we have to choose some shape for the components and in this case I've chosen the Shirley shape to represent the alteration to the background that will occur relative to each of these components so when I look at the peak model it's quite an array of components there are only four that represent photo emission peaks this one A and B these are the platinum peaks and E and F represent the copper. All the other peaks, or rather background curves, these are not representative of photo emission signal, but they are simply the response to photo emission signal. So this photo emission peak here, the response in the background beneath this photo emission peak is modeled by the line shape, which is a Shirley shape. Now that actually has a problem in the sense that the area that we must use for a background is ill-defined because it goes on forever. So the number for the background doesn't mean anything other than the fact that it fits the data. So how did this peak model arrive? The reason that the line shapes are asymmetric, as we see here, is not because they were calculated from these data. The fact that the copper overlap in this way means that it'd be virtually impossible to work out the exact line shape that we would want for the platinum. However, if we look at the platinum itself, then we can construct a line shape. And that's what I did. I constructed a line shape for the background components in the peak model for the platinum. And similarly, I constructed line shapes for the copper based on a copper peak that has very little platinum in it and combining these together and using constraints that derive from these individual spectra mostly pure platinum mostly pure copper these were the basis for me constructing the peak model as we see here so to really illustrate how important it is not to calculate an asymmetric line shape from data such as these and expect to get the right answer I'm now going to construct a set that are all related to this particular spectrum using slightly different asymmetric line shapes for the platinum peaks and I will demonstrate that I can't tell the difference when I choose a different asymmetry parameter for these line shapes based on the data you see here I'm going to illustrate this point about the asymmetry by considering the asymmetry parameter in the Platinum 4F. And I would like to adjust this, not just in column A, but B and C, because these are background that relate to this line shape. So B, C and D all must adjust. And the way I'm going to do this is using the Test Peak Model button. So when I select the line shape and I press the test peak model button, what it does is it gives me a way of adjusting the peak model in some way and then calculating, based on these same data, the refit of the peak model to the data. And it does it multiple times for different parameters. So the scan 
is achieved by indicating that I want to use all the components with the same component index. These all must receive the same line shape and I must indicate the parameter that I would like to adjust. So before I actually do this I need to make sure that I've got the component index identical for all the components for which I would like the update to occur. Now although these are background types with the Shirley background defined in terms of this SB prefix, the line shape itself is identical to the first two components. This will update when I do the scan only the line shape. It won't alter the Shirley characteristic of this line shape. So that's just automatically performed provided I have the same component index for all of these Donyak Sunjik line shapes. All the others have a different component index as you can see copper has two and all the other background types have minus one. So only the Donyak Sunjik line shapes and the backgrounds of the Donyak Sunjik line shapes are included in this calculation because they have the common component index. Let me just adjust the peak model based on using the chi-square rather than a root mean square and then I select the line shape field. I don't have to do anything other than select it before I press the test peak model button and then up comes the dialog window. It's got the tick box already ticked that says update all the components with the same component index using the line shape increments. So this is what we want to do, increment the line shapes by adjusting the asymmetry parameter. Now one of the shortcuts is to just put square brackets and press return and what that will do is it will take the current value plus or minus 10%. So there's a range that, that I've obtained simply by putting square brackets pressing return and we're now in a position where we can perform a scan of this asymmetry parameter. The others are all left alone. They do not scan at the same time. So just one parameter at a time and then I press the OK button and what will happen is the data will be copied multiple times and then different peak models will be applied to each of the different spectra and they will all be added to a new VAMAS file that we can then inspect at our leisure. So it just wants me to confirm that I am doing the scan that I think I'm going to do because this can take some time if you've got a, an involved peak model and it is correct so off it goes and ultimately it will produce a new VAMAS file containing all the peaks that are identical as we see here the, the spectra are all the same in this list here and as I scan down you can see that changes do occur in the peak model as a consequence of adjusting the asymmetry parameter. Now what you should also notice is that the residual and the residual standard deviation don't deviate too much as a consequence of the changes that are being made. Let's have a look at that slightly adjusted in terms of display because, because I've got the same component indices here for the background and the photo emission peaks we can't see the real background that is available to fit these peaks now I can see it I've adjusted the background components back to having a value of minus one so they all sum to produce this overall background effect and I can copy these in the sense that I have to propagate my change in the component index to all of these other VAMAS blocks. Now I don't want to propagate components. That would alter all of these VAMAS blocks to have the same peak model. That's not what I want. What I want to do is just change the names perhaps and these component index. Well I didn't change the names but I want to change the component index. But the copy names button will have the effect of copying all the names and all the, all the component indices. So now I get to see what is happening in terms of the background shape 
as I alter the asymmetry and you can see now that things do change and this will alter the relative area of these two component peaks. It might even alter the intensity of these peaks relative to other photo emission peaks by virtue of the fact that the background is changing. So although the shape is very similar you can see that the Shirley shape is pronounced for these platinum peaks. The overall area above the background is changing so this has an influence on quantification by XPS. So this example is demonstrating that the background and the line shapes alter as a function of the line shapes or putting another way the line shapes alter as a function of the background so when we choose a Shirley background and we force a line shape to then match that Shirley background the Shirley background has determined the asymmetry for the line shape now that may be what you'd like in terms of reproducibility but it's not necessarily the same as saying that the line shapes or the peak model are physically meaningful with respect to the sample and the data that we've collected.